After a delicious breakfast at the Riverside Terrace Cafe, we took a short drive south of town because we found out about a geyser down there. And so we were pretty excited to go and check it out, see what that was all about. After a very bumpy ride down the probably only dirt road we got on during our trip to Utah, uh, we finally found the geyser. And we were kind of confused because all the geysers in Yellowstone were warm and steamy, and this one was cold. So we did a little bit of research on it, and we found out that the crystal geyser, the largest of what they call the soda pop geysers in Utah is a partially man-made geyser. It's right off the shore of the Green River, just south of the town of Green River. The geyser originated in 1936 when an oil exploration well tapped into a groundwater system under immense pressure caused by a reservoir of trapped carbon dioxide gas. The well was abandoned after drilling a total depth of 2,627 feet. But in its aftermath, a geyser was created that quickly became a regional attraction. The November 1936 front page of Moab's Times Independent boasted a new geyser that spouted an 80-foot column of water at regular intervals of about 15 minutes and a 150-foot column at intervals of about nine hours. We were there for probably a couple hours checking it out and the water didn't get very high, much more than maybe a couple feet at one time. And so we didn't get to see it spout out, but I'm sure that it does. So maybe someday if we ever get back there, we'll stay longer and check it out. After our brief visit to the Crystal Geyser, we drove down towards the town of Moab and wanted to visit the Arches National Park. When you pay for your admission, you get a seven day pass. And we didn't figure that we were gonna need seven days. I mean, we weren't even gonna be up there for seven days but we found out differently once we got there because it was pretty hot that day. I think it topped out at about 106 um, and in the shade it was probably about 103, but we stayed in the Jeep as much as we could with the AC on and just took a few short hikes as we went, but it was really pretty. The Arches National Park has the densest concentration of natural stone arches in the world. There are over 2,000 documented arches in the park, ranging from 
sliver-thin cracks to spans greater than 300 feet. I think in the time that we were there both days, we probably only saw about 25 arches, and the largest was probably the 300-foot one called the Landscape Arch, which we got to see the second day. Sandstone is made of grains of sand cemented together by minerals, but not all the sandstone is the same. The Entrada sandstone was once a massive desert full of shifting dunes of fine-grained sand. They formed a hard rock that is very porous, while the Carmel Foundation, made of sand and clays, is softer and resists water. Deep beneath the surface lies a thick layer of salts. Squeezed by rock above and below, the salt bulged upward, creating long domes. The rock layers covering these domes were forced to crack into a series, more or less, of parallel lines.
Check it out. Big old giant arch. Cindy about died on my high cup. So did I. Because I'm wearing jeans and dark <laughs> shoes and a black t-shirt. <laughs> Horrible decision on uh, clothing for this hike, but uh, we're doing all right. <laughs> it's pretty badass. So we'll take you along the hike down. Being 102 degrees outside, when we were up there in the arch, it actually felt really good because it kind of funnels the wind through and keeps really cool. On average, the park receives 8 to 10 inches of rain a year. That might not sound like much, but it's enough to keep the engines of erosion working on a 24 hour a day, 365 days a year. goes up must go down. Put the sunscreen in. It's probably like 70 degrees there. I don't know. It's glorious. Yeah, it's so good. Whew. 100. 106 out there. Six. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. There's 106. Why are we doing this for ourselves? Rainwater soaks into the porous Entrada sandstone easily, but it gets trapped in the caramel. It can slowly dissolve the calcite bonding the sand together, in other words, rotting rock from inside out. In winter, trapped water cracks and expands when it freezes, then contracts, prying the rock apart. If the park receives too much rain, the sandstone could erode so quickly that the arches might not have time to form. If it never rained here, the engines of erosion would stop. As erosion happens, a variety of shapes begin to appear. Rock walls erode into fins, then holes form. To be one of the park's official stone arches, a hole must have an opening of at least three feet in any one direction. There is no requirement for width. Many arches in the park are so skinny you have to place your cheek against the rock to see any light through them. A window is an arch that is particularly large and located on a high wall or fin, and particularly scenic beyond. A natural bridge spans a waterway, or sometimes where water once ran. Only a few bridges exist at Arches National Park.
back here tomorrow? We can. Okay. Let's say we come back tomorrow and then, and then we go check that out one the sandstone and, and the landscape arch. Yeah, that one that we didn't do over there? Yeah, and I'll let you give you a chance to one or charge your batteries up. Yeah. Oh, well, I have two first batteries, but I think we need to charge our batteries. Up. We need to charge our batteries. <laughs> <up>. <laughs>